All right, um, so I'm going to present today um, on our paper on um, benchmarking challenges in um, neural symbolic regression. So to start with, what is symbolic regression? Um, so to answer that, uh, we need to go back and look at classical regression. So in classical regression algorithms, you have some numerical data set and you have a pre-chosen functional form of an equation that you want to fit to that data set. And so then the classical regression algorithm will find the coefficients in order to fit the data set to the equation. In contrast to this, with symbolic regression, you start with only the numerical data set. You um, do not have a pre-selected equation, and the symbolic regression algorithm will actually build the equation out um, uh, symbolically um, from mathematical operations. Traditionally, this is done with um, evolutionary techniques um, using genetic programming, a, where you evolve a population of equations and um, you select the one um, through evolution that will uh, provide the best results. Um, traditional evolutionary methods are well suited to combinatorial optimization problems such as this, um, and it has the um, upside of being more general than traditional regression because it can build out the equation itself instead of presupposing the functional form. However, the downside of uh, GPSR techniques is that um, for each data set that you want to learn the equation, you have to completely retrain the algorithm. In order to um, compensate for this, uh, a subfield of SR um, has been investigating using um, deep learning techniques in order to do symbolic regression. Um, so in this, a deep, a single deep learning network um, is trained and uses um, uh, transfer learning, meta learning in order to be able to accept any numerical data set um, and transform it into any equation. Um, and so it's the same advantages of um, evolutionary techniques from that it doesn't presuppose functional form um, and it's more general, but it uh, takes generality a step further because it can um, intake any numerical data set and it does not have to be completely retrained on each data set. However, um, in this field there um, of neural symbolic regression, there is currently an issue, which is that there is no standardized evaluation across current NSR techniques. In order to evaluate an NSR network, two things are needed. The first are the actual evaluation equations, um, what equations you're testing the uh, network on to see if it is producing um, correct equations. And there is a near infinity of possible combinations of mathematical operations. And so the question is, how do you select um, what equations you're training um, your network on? And then the other component that is needed is the evaluation metrics, um, what metrics you're looking at to determine the accuracy of the networks. So first, uh, we're going to look at the actual benchmark equations that are used in NSR. There are some benchmarks that are used, um, namely the um, Nguyen data set. Uh, here, I only show the first eight um, because we only look at um, single um, uh, operator equations. Uh, however, in the Nguyen data set, first of all, it is not universally used in all NSR techniques. And even when NSR techniques use the Nguyen, uh, Nguyen data set in order to evaluate their networks, they also tend to add their own equations um, that they have created um, for their networks using their own um, equation generation. Another big issue in the new data set is that it lacks diversity and in some cases complexity um, in the equations themselves. You can see that four out of the eight equations are just uh, polynomials of increasing uh, order. And so in order to um, compensate for that, in this paper, we introduce um, eight additional equations um, that we um, purposefully built to scale in complexity um, and diversity so that they would um, represent not only um, both simple and complex equations, but also a diversity of mathematical operations. Um, so we encourage <laughs> going forward that um, all NSR um, methods are evaluated on these benchmark equations and these benchmark equations um, performance is reported. The next thing we want to look at is um, the metrics, how you evaluate um, the equations that are discovered by the networks. So in order to illustrate the problem that comes from having multiple metrics, um, we first look at a network. This is how an NSR method would work. You have some test data, you feed it into a network, it produces an equation, and you evaluate on some metric. 
when you only have a single one that you're looking at, this is great. But as you start to add more methods and each method um, in literature is reporting its own metric, it becomes harder and harder to actually evaluate how well networks are doing compared to other networks because they're all reporting on unique metrics using unique equations. And so it's hard to find that final ranking of, yes, this is definitively the best network currently in literature, and this is the one I should be using in NSR. So to dive further into that, we need to look at um, numeric metrics first. So with numeric metrics, you compare the um, uh, ground truth y values to the y hat values that are um, gotten from the uh, generated equations. There are three of them that um, we compare here. These are all pulled uh, directly from NSR literature. The first is the um, NumPy is close method, where it co um, compares the uh, y value array uh, ground truth to the y hat value array. The second is normalized mean squared error. And the third is the coefficient of determination um, r squared. Uh, in both the um, NumPy is close and the coefficient determination, um, the higher the uh, score, the better, whereas normalized mean squared error, the lower the score is better. So the first thing that we did was to actually try and do um, the cross method comparison. Um, we looked at three different networks and we looked at it across the um, uh, metrics that I have mentioned. Um, so looking at just um, normalized mean squared error, we can see that definitively um, Valpor's network performed the best. And when we look at um, R squared over some threshold value, um, it looks the same. However, as we expand this into R squared, we suddenly see that Biggio's network is performing fast. And then if you go back um, even further into um, the NumPy is close metric, it completely changes. And so the order and the ranking of which network is doing best is determinate on the actual metric that is being used. And often, such as in the case of um, the uh, NumPy is close metric, um, that is the metric that Biggio um, created or used for their um, network. And so it is no surprise that it, their network is doing best on that metric. Um, another issue with symbolic metrics is that you need to be able to take the produced equation and get y values out of them. And for that, you need coefficients. And so here we need to talk about post-equation generation coefficient fitting. So when networks, NSR networks specifically, are trained on and uh, equations, they also produce equations, they use a coefficient, uh, placeholder coefficient token. Um, all of these equations are produced as strings, um, and this C token is what's um, produced by the networks. And it's only after the equations are produced and the NSR network has done its work that a separate algorithm, generally the BFGS algorithm, is used to fit the coefficients. So in theory, a trained model could learn to ignore the data and just produce the same sufficiently long equation that could be fit to any new data set using coefficient fitting after the equation generations happened. In order to test this, what we did is um, for all of the training and testing equations, we set their coefficients to one. So if coefficient fitting is um, producing any coefficients that are not one, it is not producing the right coefficient. So first we look at, um, to see the over-reliance of coefficient fitting um, with NSR networks, we actually look at the NSR networks themselves and their performance um, when coefficient fitting is there versus when it's denied. And we can see that across um, two of our numeric metrics and all of our networks, um, uh, with the exception of Vassal, um, there is a significant improvement when um, coefficient fitting is being used versus when it is being withheld. Um, Vassal's network is a little bit unique in that they um, find coefficients both during training and after training. So you can still see the increase in performance on numeric metrics um, uh, when at, when coefficient fitting is being used after equation generation, but um, we believe that the lack of um, statistical significance is explained by the fact that they do some preliminary um, equation, uh, sorry, uh, coefficient um, finding uh, during the actual training of the equation. So to further look at the effects of coefficient fitting on the networks, um, what we did was we actually just looked at the length of the actual generated equation, symbol by symbol, um, uh, the target, ground truth target equation versus the actual um, 
produced predicted equation. And in all cases across all testing equations across all of the networks, um, there is a significant um, difference either above or below in the length of the predicted equation versus the target equation, which would point to the fact that they are not producing the right equations. They're not producing equations of the right length, which means they're not correct. Um, to further clear, um, to further look into this, uh, the last thing we did was we actually just looked at the magnitude of the coefficients that are being produced by the networks. Um, so it is worth noting that this is a lot of equations. Um, it's a lot of coefficients. It is all coefficients for all equations across all testing equations across all networks. And, um, you can see if it was working the way it should, all of the, um, coefficients should be one. Um, and in fact, most of them are because that's what the target, um, equations coefficients were. However, there are still a lot of, uh, coefficients that are either very small or very large, which indicates that, um, Coefficient fitting is being used to either minimize or emphasize terms in order to better fit the equation that is being produced to the data, which should not be happening if it's producing the correct equation in the first place. In order to look at the true scale of how much um, coefficient fitting can be used to manipulate data, what we did was we actually just produced some control equations. These are not, um, in these first three columns, these are not equations that are being produced by any NSR network. Um, in the first one, they are just some random equations that we produce with some equation generation software. Um, in the second one, uh, it is a Fourier series. In the third one, they are polynomials um, of order 10. And uh, in any case um, where it's bold across many of the equations, um, and many of the control equations, you can see that coefficient fitting allows these control equations to perform just as well, if not better, than equations that are being produced by NSR networks. Which raises the question, what's the point in the computational cost of using an NSR network when you can just pull a sufficiently long polynomial, use traditional the classical regression techniques, get some coefficients, and it fits the data? Well, in order to answer that, we need to turn our attention to symbolic metrics. So with symbolic metrics, you actually directly compare um, the equation symbolically, um, symbol by symbol, uh, generally in the tree form of an equation. So first um, is cross entropy loss. Uh, cross entropy loss is used on the um, actual tokenized uh, equation representation. Um, then there is symbolic uh, inequivalence, um, where the target and purchase equations are compared in their tree representations to determine if they're the same tree or not. And if um, you report the proportion of equations that um, do not match across all the testing equations. And then there's the tree edit distance, um, where you calculate how many edits it would take to transform the predicted equation tree into the target equation tree. And you report the proportion of the number of changes um, to the total nodes in the target tree. So when we look at this, and I know this is a lot to put on a slide, but when we look at this, um, what we can see is in any case um, where there are three stars, it means that um, that uh, network performs statistically significantly better um, on producing um, control equations um, in that specific um, metric than um, our control, our, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, to, uh, control um, metrics, uh, control equations, um, the NSR networks actually performed better and in all but for one case across all of the networks, across all of the um, symbolic metrics, these um, NSR networks did do better, which means even though numerically they might perform as well as just random control equations, symbolically, they are producing more accurate equations. And that is important. <laughs> there is a point in using NSR. So that raises the question, why not ju just use symbolic metrics then? Why don't we just look at symbolic metrics? So let's actually look at symbolic versus numeric metrics. So here we have both the symbolic representation and the numeric representation of the equation x to the third plus x squared plus x. And we can compare that to the equation x to the fourth plus x to the third plus x. You can see symbolically, these two equations are quite similar. There's only a single node of difference between them. But numerically, especially in the far ranges of um, uh, uh, negative three to three being the random X range we chose, um, they're actually quite different. Now we can compare that case to the case of log of X plus log of X squared versus the square root of X squared plus X times log of X. These two equations are symbolically quite different. 
their equation trees are extremely different. They would have a very high um, symbolic metric. However, numerically, these two equations are quite close. And it's possible that you could, depending on what you were looking for, use one in place of the other, because in this range, numerically, it might not really matter as much which one you're using. And so because of this, we can't simply use numeric or symbolic metrics to test networks. We need to use both. So in conclusion, um, we need to standardize testing benchmark equations um, and metrics for ease of cross-method comparison in the NSR field so that uh, advancements are immediately obvious. We, um, in this paper, introduce uh, further benchmark equations um, to better represent the plethora of equations that could pop up. Um, and we also advise that R squared and tree edit distance are used as the symbolic and numeric metrics. And we also um, showed why we need to look at both symbolic and numeric metrics for true network performance, and we cannot focus on simply one or the other. Um, for our next steps, um, we plan to actually train networks on both symbolic and numeric metrics, not just evaluate them in order to produce more accurate equations. Um, and we also want to look at randomizing the X range of data sets and evaluating on extrapolated data because we think this may make um, numeric metrics more accurate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Oh. If you don't mind, go to him, so since you did, yes, one already. Okay, very nice talk. Uh, so there is a uh, theorem in machine learning about so there's no no free lunch theorem, which basically says that you know uh, there's no any single machine learning algorithm that universally is the best across all the data data sets, right? Uh, and I wonder, in this symbolic regression world, um, uh, you know, do you see this picture that, uh, you know, different methods will be performing, you know, differently and there are different, um, uh, best approaches for different data sets? Uh, now, if that is the case, uh, you know, should we, you know, just continue, you know, evaluate on different data sets or should we, you know, agree? Uh, on a single set of benchmark data sets that we uh, need to evaluate. Thank you. Yeah, um, I do agree that in the neural small regression field, we will get to a point where we're creating more specialized networks that are meant to have very high performance on a subset of data sets. However, it's a relatively new field. Um, at the time of writing the paper, um, there were only five um, methods across um, all literature that we could find. And the reason we only presented results from three, three of them is because uh, despite a lot of effort, we were only able to get the um, methods for three of them and therefore evaluate them. And so NSR is in such early years now that I think focusing our efforts on, um, you know, unifying benchmarks and stuff like that so we can tell very easily when advancements are being made is more important than considering the um, more niche networks that are only able to do one thing. Because when we get the general networks that are just meant to do any equations performing very well, then we can kind of handshake on more specialized ones and say, yeah, mine doesn't use these standardized benchmarks, but it's because I want it to do this. But right now, all of literature is like, no, we want it to do everything. And it's like, okay, but you're only comparing it on this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but make it a yes or no question, please. <laughs> it is actually a yes or no question. Uh, so is it fair to conclude uh, that uh, NSR methods just learn human preferences in equation representation? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> um, I would love to talk with you about that. Uh, in short, um, in a way, yes. Uh, basically, what we talked about a lot when we were writing this is we started talking about like our, you know, how do we judge these networks, this like that, and 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 you know, people have a tendency to just say, hey, like that equation fits all these things really well, so we just use that, and networks seem to be doing the same thing. So kind of yes, um, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so please let's thank Amanda again.